When I ask you to deal with word problems or solve word problems in algebra, I don't just want you to find the answers. You're beyond that. What I usually want you to think about is how can you write equations for these situations? Um, because that's, that's really the hard part. So some general tips, uh, read the question very carefully. Look at your units. Your units will help you form your equations and I'll show you that in a couple of examples. Um, draw pictures for some problems, but definitely organize data. Sometimes you actually draw the picture to organize the data you've been given in the problem. Always take an inventory of what you have and what you need to solve the problem. And then check your answers for reasonableness. Um, so you want an answer that makes sense. And you want to make sure you actually answer the question. Because sometimes you might write an equation that gives you an answer that doesn't actually answer the question. Um, so I know that I have 83 bars in total and that there were some $1 bars, some $2 bars, and $121 was brought in altogether. And notice how I separated out my two types of information by the units. So this is all information on money and this is all information on number of bars. And that's why it's important to look at the units in your problem because it'll help you figure out what type of equations you need. So as I said, um, in the slide, mixture problems have one or two or two or more different types of things and two or more attributes. So the attributes in this case are money and total number. Now I have to figure out how many bars were one dollars and how many bars were two dollars of this 121 total. And so that's what I'm going to make my variables. X is equal to the number of one dollar bars and then Y is equal to the number of two dollar bars. And so I'm just going to take these two types of information, uh, the number of bar information and the money information, and write my two equations. Because the rule of thumb for algebra is, if you have two variables, you need two equations to solve for both. So one of my equations is going to use this 83 bars. And uh, so that's just, in this case, since these are numbers of bars, my first equation is going to be x plus y equals 83. My second equation is going to deal with the value of the bars or how much they cost. So if I have x $1 bars, then the total value of the $1 bars is 1 times x. And then 2 times y represents the total value of the $2 bars because they were each $2 and I have y of them, so 2 times y is the total value. And I know the overall intake of money was 121. So this equation deals with the value in dollars, and this equation deals with the actual number of bars. And my two units were numbers of bar and values. So that's how you determine how to write your two equations, and this is my system. So if you go ahead and solve this system, I would suggest by elimination, you'll get the answer to the question. The key is the work rate uh, for each person. And Ivan's work rate is just one fourth because he can do one job or split one cord in four days. So this is his work rate. And then Francois's work rate is one half because he can do one job in two days. And if he just worked for one day, he would do a half of the job. And if Ivan did uh, work for a day, he'd get a fourth of the job. And so this question asks for how long does it take them working together? So they're working for the same amount of time. So I'm going to use T equals the time uh, working together. And I'm going to take a Q from the word problems units to determine the units on the time. And so I'm going to use days because the work rates are in days. So T is the time working together in D and days. And so if Ivan works at a rate of one fourth of a job a day for T days and Francois 
does the same thing one half of a job in t days, together they will complete one full job or they will split one cord of wood. So if I solve this equation now, then I would figure out, um, for t, I'd figure out how long it takes them working together. I know this uniform motion in a current sounds like the craziest thing ever, but it's actually not that difficult of a concept to understand. It's actually the concept behind the treadmill. So what I'm going to do is we're going to look at the example of a river, and this coaster is going to represent the flow of the water. So let's say that a river goes five kilometers an hour in this direction, right? So, and this hamster is going to be a person, and let's say that you're floating on an inner tube on the river, and if this river goes five kilometers per hour this direction and you're just flowing and floating and going with the current, you're going to be traveling five kilometers per hour in that direction. So then, hypothetically speaking, let's say there's a waterfall right here, and the water's going five kilometers per hour in this direction, and you realize there's a waterfall, so you're not just going to float to your death. You're going to actually swim frantically in the opposite direction. So if the water's going five kilometers per hour and you can only swim two kilometers per hour, then the current is faster than you by three kilometers per hour. So your net direction, five kilometers this way, you can only go two. And then what's happening is you are going to be going that direction three kilometers per hour. So if you want to survive, that means you have to be able to swim faster than five kilometers per hour. So if you can swim eight kilometers per hour, and the water's going five kilometers this way, and you're going eight this way, then your net speed is going to be three kilometers per hour in, in the safe direction. Now, if you don't know the direction of the waterfall, and, oh no, five kilometers per hour this way, and you can swim three kilometers per hour, so the coaster, the water's going five kilometers, you're going three, so that means, oh no, your net speed is eight kilometers per hour in that direction. So the thing about uniform motion in a current is if you're going with the current, you go faster. If you are going against the current, you go slower because you have to fight against the current. So if you think about what happens on a treadmill, you can run at a certain speed, right? If the treadmill's going too slow, you like run into the bar. But if the treadmill's going too fast, meaning faster than you can run, then you fly off the treadmill. So that's what uniform motion in a current really is. Once you understand the concept of uniform motion in a current, the equations are set up the same way. Um, so here's the information I have from the problem. There's a 60 kilometer trip. It's five kilometers upstream, three kilometers downstream. Now the time is going to be an indication as to which one the current is helping you and which one the current is hurting you. So five hours upstream means that that's against the current's hurting, and three hours downstream means you're going with the current and going faster. And the question asks you to find the rate of the boat and the rate of the current. So I'm going to set up the rate times distance table, R, T, and D. And my trips, in this case, are going to be upstream and downstream. Now, I don't know the rates, but I do know the times. So upstream is five hours, and downstream is three hours. And I also know the distances. So this is 60, and that's 60, because you're going to and then from, same distance. So now the question is, what's up with the rates? So remember, the whole premise behind uniform motion in a current is that if you are going with the current, the current helps you, so it's a net addition. So if you are going against the current, it's a subtraction. So what you do is you take the boat's current and you subtract a boat speed and you subtract off the current speed and that will give you the net speed going upstream or against the current. And then you add for when the current helps you. So if the boat's going b kilometers per hour, and the current's going C, then its net speed is B plus C. And uniform motion in a current problems are ready-made for the elimination method. Because if I go ahead and write my equations, 
I have two variables, which means I need two equations. So five times the boat minus the current has to equal 60. And three times the boat plus the current also has to equal 60. And so this is my system of equations. And you can distribute, or you can do the trick we learned in the second six weeks about division. And this equation becomes b minus c equals 12. And this one becomes b plus c equals 20. And then how are you going to solve this one? Well, you're going to add them like Gauss would, and you get 2b equals 32. And then you get the boat current being 16, which means then the current speed, or the boat speed is 16, and the current speed has to be 4. And these, of course, are in kilometers per hour. So the key for uniform motion in a current is you add the current to the still speed for with, and you subtract for against.